Welcome to a new 13 cube shorts where we're talking about volatility three public beta. Let's not waste any time. We'll jump right in and tell you everything you need to know about this major new version. First up, volatility three isn't just an update to the existing volatility two code base. It is a complete rewrite from the ground up in Python three. It was designed to support some major changes in the memory forensics landscape that we've seen over the past few years including the increase in the size of the memory samples that we're collecting and analyzing, the inclusion of multiple memory samples in common investigative scenarios, the number of plugins that we're using has only increased over the years, and we have the introduction of rapid kernel development cycles across Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. For example, every six months, as you know, we get a major new release for Windows. So what new features can you expect? Well, thanks to that rewrite in Python 3, we're going to have some major performance boosts. We have the removal of dash dash profile and the audience cheered. So this is a big one. No more running KDBG scan or image info to try to find the profile you need to use to analyze the memory sample. Nope, no more of that. Just point it at it and it'll figure it out. So that's pretty freaking awesome if you ask me. No more dash dash profile. We have proper evaluation of 32-bit code on 64-bit systems, think WoW 64. And we have automatic evaluation of in-memory code to try to minimize the amount of reverse engineering on the part of the analyst. So this is a big deal as well. I don't know about you, but I am not a reverse engineer by trait. I can read assembly, I know the basics, but that's not my day job. So this is certainly a welcomed improvement. As far as new features for developers, we have much simpler integration into third-party interfaces and libraries, extensive API documentation, the ability for plugins to directly call other plugins, which is a big deal. We could perhaps achieve a type of pipelining or chaining effect with our plugins, so that's pretty cool. And then we have plugin versioning, presumably so different versions of plugins can coexist at the same time. Previously, this was a manual process of moving those different plugin versions in and out of the directories when they were needed. So that also is a welcomed change. And we have direct integration of custom symbol tables and data structures. The first full release is expected in the summer of 2020, particularly in August of 2020. And the end of life for volatility two is expected about one year later in August of 2021. All right, enough of the boring stuff. You'll notice the GitHub links below. So let's go ahead and jump over to a virtual machine and take this thing for a test drive. We're going to be starting from scratch. We have a new Ubuntu 18.04 virtual machine that doesn't yet have Volatility 3 beta installed. You're looking at the Volatility Foundation's GitHub page. And as you can see, there are six repositories or repos listed here. As you might guess, we're going to be interested in Volatility 3. The Volatility link below it is the standard 2.0 version that you should be using for production work. And below that, there are several other repos that we'll ignore for now. So let's go ahead and go back up to the top and click on that Volatility 3 link. And this will, of course, take us to the Volatility 3 repo. If we scroll down, we'll notice the Volatility 3 readme, which contains quite a bit of useful information but for the sake of brevity, let's go ahead and just grab the URL so that we can do a git clone and start checking out this new beta version. So I'll click the green button that you see here. And when I do, you will notice a dropdown that contains the URL. And if I click the little clipboard icon next to that, we have now copied that URL to the clipboard. At the terminal, you'll notice I have the current volatility repo already cloned, which is 2.6.1 as of this recording. So now I'll do a git clone and paste in that URL. And within a few seconds, we should have volatility three. So let's go ahead and do a directory listing. And there it is. So just like that, we have pulled down the newest volatility three beta directly from GitHub. And if we do a directory listing here, here we see vol.py, just as with the 2.train. This is, of course, the main file that we will use to execute volatility. Let's start by running vol.py without any options, just to make sure it works. 
Of course, as expected, we get an error because we didn't tell volatility to do anything. Let's repeat that, but add the dash H for help and pipe it through more so we can see what options are available to us. We have optional arguments at the top, but as we continue to scroll down, you'll notice the start of all of our plugins that are included with this particular version of Volatility 3 Beta. And one interesting thing to note right out of the gate is the nomenclature change. All of the plugins, or at least most of them, appear to be grouped by the name of the operating system for which they apply. For example, Linux dot, Mac dot, and as we scroll down here in a moment, you'll notice Windows dot plugins. So that's interesting. If we keep scrolling down, you'll notice that before we start the Windows groupings, you'll see Timeliner dot Timeliner, which of course is not OS specific, but extracts time based artifacts from memory. We had this plugin available to us in previous versions of Volatility. And below that, we have the start of our Windows plugins. If we keep scrolling down though, you'll notice a common theme and that is the three tiered nomenclature. For example, windows.pslist.pslist. And the second repetition of pslist or pscan or pstree as you see below that is case sensitive. So for example, windows.pstree.pstree all lowercase isn't going to work. That second repeating of pstree is case sensitive. I have no idea why it's named like this. You would think, for example, it would just be windows.pslist and that would be all we need. But there must be some logical reason why we have that three-tiered naming. So now let's go ahead and actually check out how we would run Volatility 3 against the memory sample and tell it to do something. As you can see, there is a mem dump for Windows 10 x64 build 17134. But as we covered in the intro, we no longer need to specify a profile. Use dash F as always to specify the memory image. And then let's just jump right into the plugin itself. But let's go ahead and make a mistake first because I like to do things wrong at first just to see what happens. PS list. And as you can see, there is no just PS list anymore like there used to be. Doesn't exist. So that was expected because we already looked at the name of the plugin being windows.pslist.pslist, as you can see right here. Let's go ahead and repeat this though and try it with the case mistake I mentioned earlier. So we'll do all lowercase, windows.pslist.pslist. And let's see what happens. You see, you didn't believe me, did you? It is case sensitive, that did not work. Now let's do it right, capital P and capital L in pslist. Now it's actually starting to do something, but you're going to notice something that looks really weird when comparing to Volatility 2, and that is this scanning memory. And you'll notice all this stuff go by, reading TPI layer and several other things. I'll kind of speed through this section because it does take about 30 seconds or so. This is because Volatility 3 is attempting to determine how to parse this memory image without the need for us to specify that profile. Remember, that's one of the major new features in Volatility 3. So you can expect a difference in the way this output looks. We certainly didn't see anything that looked like this with the 2 version of Volatility. So let's go ahead and speed this up and see what the PS list output looks like. And there we go, but it looks like we've got some errors at the bottom, as you can see. So let's scroll back up and decrease the font size so it all fits. Starting at the top, we have our header. We have PID, PPID, image file name, so on and so forth. Notice that the output is different than the previous PS list plugin because things are ordered differently. I kind of like having PID and PPID at the very beginning. It makes sense. For example, at the very top, we see system. And if we continue to scroll down, it looks like valid output. Everything looks exactly like we would expect on a Windows 10 system. So far, so good. But then you'll notice that we have a crash right about here. So for whatever reason, it got down to here and then had some sort of issue parsing the memory image when it tried to enumerate the processes in memory. Again, I'm not going to dig into this error and determine what exactly went wrong. It's, of course, beta. And in this case, it's the first public beta that's been released. So you can, of course, expect issues because this is a work in progress. But for the most part, it worked as expected without using a profile. We just ran the PS list plugin or more specifically, windows.pslist.pslist. Let's try another one. windows.filescan.filescan. And yes, the second file scan is case sensitive. 
capital F, capital S. And you'll notice we see the same thing. We see a scanning memory layer, scanning primary two, so on and so forth. But then fairly quickly, we get to our results. And for the most part, this plugin seemed to work fine without crashing. We get offset and name. We have all of the objects in memory that represent files. And as we scroll down through here, you'll notice the output looks perfectly valid. This plugin is commonly used alongside the dump files plugin, if you'll recall from volatility two days. And it, for the most part, appears to work just like it always did. All right, so let's recap. We know that we no longer need to use dash dash profile with volatility. We simply run vol.py dash F, our memory image, then the plugin, and then any options that are relevant for that specific plugin. We took a look at two examples, windows.pslist.pslist and windows.filescan.filescan. Remember that the second repetition of that plugin name, in other words, the second PS list in windows.pslist.pslist .list is case sensitive. As you saw, if we use all lowercase, it's just not gonna work. Again, I don't know why it's case sensitive. I don't know why it's repeated twice, but I do like the fact that the plugins are grouped by operating system. That That's kind of cool. It makes it easier to organize and see what plugin is applicable to what OS. So I do like that part. But once you get past the basic syntax, this works pretty much like any other version of volatility, albeit with all these cool new features that we talked about in the intro. I would encourage you to pull down this repo and play around with this yourself as they continue to release other betas of Volatility 3 throughout the coming year. We will continue to cover it on this channel. The full release is expected, as we talked about, next summer, or depending on when you're watching this, that would be the summer of 2020. So we can look forward to that. But that pretty much wraps up this 13 Cubed Shorts episode. As always, thank you for watching, thank you for subscribing, and I will catch you in the next one.